Welcome everyone to this week's video. Today we are on Fish Friday number 65 and we have a good one for you today. Today's fish is really important, highly sought after fish. I guarantee you you've heard it. This is not one you have not heard of. I promise you you've heard of it and promise you probably don't know that much about it. Today we are going to be talking about the BAM. The bluefin tuna, or more specifically, the Atlantic bluefin tuna. Um, the reason why I say more specifically is that the bluefin tuna used to be one species, and they have since separated the Pacific and the Atlantic bluefin. Um, so we're going to be talking more about the Atlantic bluefin. So the bluefin tuna, or scientific name Thunus thinus. Again, that is Thunus thinus. It is part of the family Scombridae. Um, Scombridae is the family of mackerel, tuna, and bonito. So, if you've heard of any of those fish, that's where this that's where this fish would belong. Now, these fish have a huge range, massive range. They are native to the Atlantic Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea. They used to be in the Black Sea, but they're extinct there. But they are found all over the ocean. And they are very deep divers as well. So they can dive up to depths of 1,006 meters, which is just right at 3,300. So not only can you find them all over the ocean, you can find them at all depths. Um, these things are everywhere. Um, and something you may not know about this fish is it's a very large fish. People think, you know, tuna, they're a big fish. But do you know how big of a fish they are? Um, the adults actually average somewhere between two and two and a half meters in length at 6.6 .6 to 8.2 feet. Um, and they can weigh on average 225 to 250 kilograms. 496 to 550 pounds right so that's a really large fish a lot of people don't realize how big um tunas actually are and in fact the igfa record is 3.7 meters which is 12 feet long and that fish weighed 690 679 kilograms which is 1497 pounds and remember, that's the IGFA record, which the IGFA is the International Game Fish Association. That's fish that are caught with rod and reels. Um, they can get bigger than that. The Smithsonian Museum actually has accepted that they can weigh up to 910 kilograms, which is 2,010 pounds. So they can get larger than that. They are a massive, massive um, as you can tell in the picture, you know, we won't go into this too much. They have this real diamond body shape, um, conical head, really cone head. Um, they got a large mouth, dark blue on the back, very silver on the bottom, really short pectoral fins, these little yellow um, caudal finlets, you know, these little yellow sp uh, little fins right there. Um, but little fins, these little caudal finlets right there. Um, but, you know, I mentioned that they actually have a relatively short length of their pectoral fins. They're actually shorter than most of your other tuna. Um, something else that's interesting to note is that they have a liver that is covered blood vessel. Absolutely covered. Um, something else about the Atlantic bluefin tuna that's interesting is they have a pineal window which allows this species to navigate over um, its entire range. And remember, it has multiple thousands of miles. So it's using the sun and the moon and the stars to actually navigate around the ocean. Um, so, but I'm not gonna go too much into that. You, you know what a bluefin tuna lo looks like. It's got this really half moon um, tail. Um, the pectoral fins and the first caudal fin will actually can actually be kind of sucked back into the body that allows it to be streamlined. Um, so we'll move on. 
Now, this is a very, very powerful fish. Something that is something that I want you to be aware of. It is a powerful fish. Um, the body actually stays rigid. When you think of a, a lot of people when they think of a fish swimming, they think of like a um, a snake you know, that their body is uh, sinuous. That's kind of the case. But tuna actually stay rigid when the tail flicks. That increases the efficiency of the strokes. Um, something interesting in a note about how fast these things can move. Um, that's another thing. These things can move fast. They typically swim at speeds between 7 and 15 kilometers per hour. But when they chase prey, um, they can swim up to 71 kilometers per hour. And sometimes up to 100 kilometers. They have been... Uh, uh, documented going that they are extremely fast they can beat um, when they are chasing prey they can beat their tails up to um, 30 times per second I like my notes yes 30 times per second. that's incredibly fast and they in fact they're so fast um, that powerful swimming dolph uh, animals like tuna dolphins are another example um, they get cavitation bubbles, which is basically they're going so fast that little air bubbles um, catch around their tail and they have to slow down. That actually limits their maximum swimming speed. So te theoretically, they could go faster, dolphins. Um, but even if they have the power to swim faster, you know, dolphins have to restrict their speed because the, cl the cavitation bubbles on the tails are really painful. How it's going and cavitation also slow tuna but less a uh, reason um unlike dolphins uh these the fins the tail fins of tuna are actually bony fins that have no nerve in it so um that's why they can swim through some of the cavitation but still limits them um and just another interesting fact kind of on this there have actually been lesions, you know, sore spots on tails of tuna that have been caught that are consistent with cavitation damage. Basically, they're swimming so fast that they're ripping their skin. Um, something else that's interesting to note is kind of like the second to last interesting fact that we're going to end the video on is um, these fish have a very efficient circulatory system. Um, one of the highest blood to hemoglobin concentrations among fish. Make no mistake, tuna are a warm-blooded species of fish. Um, people think of fish as being, you know, cold-blooded, which is not a true term. Uh, you know, the true terminology would be ectotherm, uh, where an ectotherm gathers its um, body temperature from the envi outside environment. And tuna are a warm-blooded, like a mammal. They have an endo endothermic reaction. Um, that keeping its core muscles warm um, is critical for them. And how they do it, they do it through a combination of different factors. They are you know, very mobile, have a high metabolism, and they also use something called countercurrent heat exchange. Um, and countercurrent heat exchange prevents the heat from being lost to the surrounding water. Um, what happens is the blood comes out on the fins, and then there's something called a reta mirabile, mir mira, mirabile, um, mirabile, mirabile. There we go. A rete, a ret, reet, reet mirabile. There we go. Reet mirabile. That stands for a wonderful net. So what happens is as the blood comes out of the body of the uh, fin, there is a net of all capillary that just don't they're not very large they don't allow blood to go across but what they do is they it allows the transfer so as the blood comes out of the body it's hot and oxygen oxygen and what happens is that warmth goes over because as it comes up here because of the heat exchange cold cool and oxygen and it oxygen the tissue comes back down and it's cold and deoxygenated. So what happens as it comes back down, it takes some of the heat from the blood coming out of the body 
goes over here so now this blood is cool it's still deoxygen it's not like oxygen but it allows some of that heat transfer to happen here instead of way out here that's why when you're um that's one of the reasons like if you're in the snow you wear mitten heavy wool socks it's because you lose a lot of heat through your fingers and toes well basically um think about it this way instead of losing heat through your fingers or toes all your heat would be lost on your elbows where you could go basically walk around in the snow and only have to wear something that warmed up your elbows that's something uh kind of how counter current heat so this is what allows them to be very mobile very active and survive in the um chilly waters of the north atlantic so now for the final interesting interesting fact that we're going to end on is something that i have preached to my stream multiple times i think i've said it on the youtube videos please 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 go watch the end of the line it is a documentary film showing the problems of overfishing make no mistakes this fish is endangered critically endangered they've made some headway but they are nowhere near out of trouble um and it's just because of overfishing this fish is worth a lot of money it's worth an incredible amount of money um here we go i had to look up this as well in january 2012 a prime 269 kilogram bluefin tuna sold in a japanese fish market for 736 thousand dollars that's one fish one fish got sold for seven hundred and thirty six thousand dollars that is a lot of money and of course evil fishing companies are going to be going after these to sell them i mean why wouldn't they please 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 go watch the end of the line in the live movie something that's in that movie that one of the reasons why this fish is in trouble and why fishing um in the ocean is in trouble in general in 2007, researchers from the International Commission for the Conservation of Atlantic Tunas, ICCAT, which those are the regulators for the Atlantic bluefin uh, fishing, um, they recommended a global quota of 15,000 tons to maintain current stocks or 10,000 tons to allow the fish to uh, recover. So basically they said, if we fish, if we harvest 15,000 tons, the tuna population won't go down if we do it at 10,000 tons the tuna fish uh, the tuna population will cover the regulatory agency then chose 36,000 tons over double what the scientists uh, suggested but then the surveys actually came out that said 60,000 tons were actually being taken so that means that basically scientists said do this to um keep the population the same do this to recover the population the regulatory agency said well we're gonna allow this and the people that were fishing said screw that we're gonna take this um and it's really real it goes all into there please 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 go watch the end of the line it's not just about tuna but it shows a lot of things i'm sorry to end on a kind of a depressing note but I felt that that was important and that that is what I want to leave today. But thank you guys so much again. I really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. If I don't, please be safe. Have a great day. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. If you do, I'd really appreciate it. Hope to see you again. And...